Now uh, discuss about some abstract variation formulation. So, many of the PDEs can be converted into that abstract formulation and get the existence uniqueness theory. So, it will be very helpful. So, we study abstract formulation. Abstract formulation. So, let h be a Hilbert space not necessarily h 1 not or h 1 h be a Hilbert space and k a closed convex. So, some functional analysis and weak topology little more knowledge on weak topology is important to prove the result which I am telling. So, it is better get to the closed convex set h. And then uh, what I am going to say the theorem what essentially tells you suppose you have a closed convex set here it has to be a convex set. So, closed convex set. So, it is including the so let is the best thing is the circle ok. And this is your k and this is your a whole thing is your h and you have your point here and what the abstract theorem tells you that there is a closest point what yes. and which can be characterized. That means, any other point z will be further than this one ok, okay. so that is it. So, uh, that is about the theorem this is a r 2 is you know it this one and you can see that if k is not closed uh, suppose you have a not convex suppose I have a set like this. And then I can have a point I can have two minimum points. So, you see. So, that means if it is not convex uh, you may not get your uniqueness. So, for example, if you have an annulus this is not convex this is your k and then look at your point x here then all the points on here are the minimal points concentric circles. So, you have infinitely many solutions here you have two solutions. So, there is no uniqueness no uniqueness these facts we are going to no uniqueness if k is not convex. Similar thing if k is not open. So, let me write that one. So, let us see a k is not open. So, suppose k is not closed. So, you have your uh, x here and then there is no minimum point here this point is not in k this point y is not in k. So, you see no existence. So, even in the R 2, but what it says that even in the Hilbert space uh, the results are true unique solution if k is a closed convex set. So, that is the theorem I am going to state here theorem ok uh, h k as above h k as above then for given x in h there exists a unique y in k such that instead of that you have to take the distance distance is your norm here norm of x minus y is equal to minimum of norm of x minus z. So, you see for all z in k ok and then there is also a characterization this we call it 1 and further 
y can be characterized by can be characterized x as so y in k x minus y z minus y is less than or equal to 0 for all z in k. You say and this we call it a. that means if y is a solution of 1 then y is a solution of 2 and conversely if y is a solution of 2 it is also a solution of 1 and this is called the variational inequality variational inequality. So, you have your proof there. So, let me try to give a, a quick proof of that, verify the steps. So, any minimization problem, so proof, so let me do it in, okay. So, let d is equal to that minimum or infimum, I call it infimum because this is called infimum norm of x minus z z in how do you do the moment you want to attack any minimization problem you look for the minimizing sequence this is the definition of the infimum so let z n belongs to k such that model norm of x minus z n goes to d so, what you want to prove? You basically wants to show that z n converges at least along a subsequence and z n converges to an element uh, in uh, uh, that uh, norm of x minus z there exists an element y eventually you want to prove that z n converges and that y is in k. So, that is what you are basically proving that. So, from here it is immediate that z n is bounded in k right z n is bounded of course, bounded in h or k whatever it is bounded in that is trivial from here you can immediately write norm of z n uh, uh, because if z n is unbounded. So, I do not want to think. So, you verify this if you are not understood something is better verify because it is trivial because if z n goes to infinity x minus x is a fixed quantity norm of x minus z n will go to infinity. So, that is not true d is a finite quantity. Now, this is a Hilbert space this is where your functional analysis needed. So, you have to verify all these facts or you have to understand your functional analysis properly along a subsequence we do not make it a z n k etcetera, but along a subsequence we use the same thing and I am sure these things are you are familiar already along a subsequence uh, z n converges to y in h we do not know y is in k. Okay. So, uh, there is another notion what are called weakly lower semi continuous weakly lower semi continuous. what is this lower semi continuity. So, uh, we generally write it as weakly lower semi continuous. So, what is lower semi continuity? What is continuity of f? Continuity mean if x n converges to x implies f x n converges to f x that is the continuity of f lower semi continuity means there are motivations when especially this lower semi continuity is an important concept in the minimization and optimization problems ok. Because you are looking at the so you need some sort of continuity not full you need some sort of an estimate from the lower side. So, lower semi continuity means x n converges to f whatever be the topology implies your f of x less than equal to lower 
limit of n tends to infinity of f x n. Okay. So, that is what your lower semicontinuity. So, what is weak lower semicontinuity? x n converges to x weakly. So, when you are uh, uh, defining some notions like weak, not that that weak is always weak. So, so weak lower semicontinuity is not weaker than lower semicontinuity. So, you have to see when you are giving a definition about weak whether the assumption is weak or the conclusion is weak. Okay. If the assumption is weak and still you are concluding something, it is a stronger concept. So, just like that with respect to the weak convergence, you want this to happen. So, this is a strong concept n tends to infinity f of x. So, weak lower semicontinuity implies continuity, lower semicontinuity. Similarly, weakly closed, weakly closed means weakly closed implies closed, closed means strongly closed because for x n converges to x weakly x n is in some k then x is in k you are demanding the assumptions are weak. Okay, with the respect to assumptions you are concluding the same thing. So, weakly closed implies closedness. The converse is not true x n converges to uh, uh, s it is weak closed is not necessarily weakly closed, but then there is a result. So, a fact result this is a part of the weak topology closed plus convexity convexity is an algebraic concept it is not a topology so it retains it is nothing to do with the topology closeness is a topological concept so this implies weakly closed so these are the things you probably need to know from the functional analysis so you have your weak lower semicontinuity and you have your weak convergence. So, let me write down then along a subsequent this is only a certain converges to z weakly I did not mention that. So, you are have so these two things from here it implies that all this whatever I discussed here on the right side of this thing implies uh, y is in k and uh, you are and uh, y is in k. One more remark further thing and one more thing the norm is weakly lower semicontinuous. The norm is always weakly lower semicontinuous. Yeah. So, these concepts you have to know this implies y is in k and your norm of x minus y is less than or equal to norm of x minus lower limit of uh, okay. lower limit of actually it is limit uh, along a subsequence z n and, and that is nothing but your t and d is in k. So, all this put together immediately gives you norm of x minus y is because y is in k and that is smaller than t because y is in k it has to be bigger because it is an infimum. So, these are the things you will prove this is equal to the infimum norm of x minus z please uh, it is better that you go through the proof since now infimum is achieved this is same as minimum z is in k norm of x minus z. Okay. So, you have this one. So, this proves the uh, existence now what about the uniqueness okay uniqueness so you are using your functional analysis knowledge thoroughly now so by learning this course your functional analysis will get improved so assume y prime is another solution belongs to k is another solution 
you see you can it is better to draw picture ok. So, if you have two solutions least solutions ok closest you uh, you have to see that it will not happen. So, if this is y one solution y prime another solution now use the convexity. So, convexity means they all the, this whole line is inside any point here that we will use it more. So, this implies immediately y plus y prime by 2 half of that is in k for any t uh, y plus 1 minus t uh, the for 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 1 which I will use it. So, half of y prime. So, with that you can prove that implies uh, so d is the smallest one. So, d is less than or equal to norm of x minus uh, y uh, plus y prime by 2 because it is in that it is an infimum. So, for any element d will be so uh, for the analysis let me square it. So, here is a small exercise which you can show you do some expansion etcetera you can show that this is x minus y square 2 is here plus norm of x minus y square y prime square y do compute that you need to do some computation here and minus norm of y minus y prime. So, this 2 is inside ok 2 square of course, this is equal to d square uh, this is x minus this is d square by 2 this is d square by 2 by 2 d square by 2. So, that implies this is less than or equal to d square because this is a negative term that means that implies equality that is implies d square this is d square minus norm x minus y square y minus y prime square y minus y prime square is equal to d square equality coming. So, this this cancels implies y equal to y prime. So, you prove the existence and uniqueness of the uh, now you have to you do the characterization. So, you let me do that. So, you have uh, you see so you proved the existence and uniqueness start. Now, the you have to prove the uh, equivalence of one word ok. So, let us prove the equivalence of 1 and 2 equivalence of 1 and 2. Okay. So, assume 1 that is how you do it right assume 1 and x belongs to h and y is in k be the solution be the solution. So, by convexity convexity T x plus 1 minus T. Now, you choose you have to choose z is in k arbitrary z. So, z at uh, z, t z t z 1 minus t y, but that is convexity is in k for all 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 1. Therefore, because y is the minimizing solution, so you have your x minus y is less than or equal to norm of x minus t z uh, plus 1 minus t y you see ok. So, what do you do is that there is a small exercise which I will leave it square expand square and expand cancel the teams square and expand cancel whatever it is cancel and then take t tends to 0 
take t tends to 0 that will imply norm of x minus y less than or equal to norm of x minus z for no sorry that one that is not what we want that we know it what we want that will imply x because why you score it and expand this one square it and expand you get an inner product term that is nothing but and then t tends to infinity z minus y is less than or equal to 0 for all z in k and of course your y is in k. So, this is your variational inequality this is your 2. Now, conversely assume 2 assume 2 that means this is the one and then again a, a very simple exercise not need of an exercise. So, norm of x minus y square minus norm of x minus z square you can calculate to be 2 into x minus y z minus y that is uh, minus norm of z minus y square. So, this is less than or equal to this is 0 and this is uh, by 2 uh, uh, this is less than or equal to 0 this is a negative quantity that imply norm of x minus y less than or equal to norm of x minus z. Uh, for all z in k that implies norm of x minus y is equal to minimum of norm of x minus z z in k. So, you see this is your 1. So, you equivalent. So, you are minimizing problem which is a constrained minimization a constrained minimization leads to inequalities that is what you are trying to say. So, always constrain things you may not end up with equations if you have minimizing a constrained minimization lead to inequalities, but where there is no constraint if the space are going to be uh, a space subspace then it will end up with equations. I will come to that if I get time today. So, we will do that and then uh, this y is called definition y is called the projection of x the projection of x in h on to k you see. So, that means uh, we denote that p k. So, there is a mapping p k from h to k given by p k of x equal to y where y is the solution to the minimization problem where y satisfies 1 or 2 both are same satisfies 1 or 2 solves the problem minimization problem or variational inequality. This indeed is a projection in the concept in the sense of projection you have learned it in functional analysis. You can see that uh, p k of x equal to if x is in k p k of x equal to x uh, if x is in k and repeating that way you can get p k square is equal to uh, uh, p k of p k of x is equal to p k. So, you see you get once you project it uh, it will be the same p k square because p k of p k is equal to p k of x ok this is always true ok because p k of x is always in k. So, this is called a projection there is an immediate corollary you can prove from the variational inequality p k reduces the distance between any two points if x 1 x 2 belongs to h then norm of p k of the it reduces the distance p k of x 1 minus p k of x 2 is less than or equal to norm of x 1 minus x 2. 
okay. The proof is obvious E c apply the inequality you know for that one uh, by definition of p k of x 1 x minus p k of x 1 x 1 minus p k of x 1 z uh, uh, x, uh, you just look at the inequality z minus y x minus y z minus y is less than or equal to 0. So, you have your z minus p k of x 1 is less than or equal to 0 x 2 minus p k of x 2 z minus p k of x 2 less than or equal to 0. What do you do is that here you take p k of x 1 2 take p k of x 2 z equal to p k of x 2 you z is arbitrary. So, you can take this one here you take z equal to p k of x 1 and add the inequality and do things uh, to derive this this will uh, and this will give this okay, by subtracting and doing some process. One more remark in the case of R 2 geometrically that is a very nice thing if you have a convex set and if you have an x here and if you have a projection here and this is your y and your z is here. So, and you have your x minus y z minus y is less than or equal to 0. This essentially telling that this angle is obtuse ok you cannot have an acute angle uh, there ok. So, that is a kind of a geometric description about the projection. So, let me do a couple of things more maybe uh, a couple of things more yeah. So, at this uh, definition and then maybe I will stop it uh, since I do not have a time. So, we are interested in we want to study you see we wish to study a u v equal to f f a u v is equal to f v I will denote f v means integral of f v it can also be some other duality I will make such remarks later for you see even for the L naught operator and you want to find u is in h of naught keep that in mind. So, you have a definition two definitions uh, we say a is elliptic a is a bilinear form ok some h cross h. So, it is this is the case with that in mind h cos h to r by linear ok. Uh, a is called uh, a is uh, say a is continuous if there exists m. So, on the bilinear form I am defining thing for the upper which will uh, coming from your ellipticity and boundedness of your uh, met a, a differential equations if there exists m such that modulus of a u v is less than or equal to m into norm u of course, every norm is in h whatever be the norm you are defining ok. This true for all u v in h. We say a is h elliptic If there exists alpha positive such that a u u is greater than or equal to alpha into no u square for h that is a lower bout u and this should happen for all u in h. As I said this is a an example is of course, we will see more examples which are the examples given by a thing, but if a is symmetric suppose a is equal to a j in that case 
a is a i j a i j is uh, n by n then your a u v where u v are in r n ok. So, for u v in r n a u v you define to be v transpose a u that is nothing but summation a i j u j u i a j u j v i is in r this is in r ok. So, a indeed modulus of a u v is a matrix ok n by n matrix ok n by n matrix ok a u v is less than or equal to no a into no this is a vector is a modulus is in r n modulus okay. so, a u v and uh, you can also if a is symmetric a is symmetric positive definiteness. So, you see positive definite you said positive definite matrix uh, then you know that a u u is nothing but your u transpose a u uh, which is uh, greater than or equal to some alpha into norm square where alpha will be your least taken value least positive eigen value you know that positive definiteness the eigen uh, positive eigen value. So, with this I will stop here and then I will make your abstract um, uh, Stambachiati uh, abstract inequality ok. I will do it in two steps when A is symmetric and uh, it is a straightforward representation theorem with little modification. But if A is not symmetric, it is uh, one of the other interesting result. Uh, you can still prove the variation inequality not as a minimization problem, but you can have the variation inequalities known as the Stambachia theorem. Okay, so, with that we will continue in the next class. Thank you. Thank you very much.